in the previous video that is step number three for solving transportation model we saw how to test the initial feasible solution for acceptability that is whether the initial feasible solution is acceptable to test for optimality now in this video we look at step number four which is to test the initial feasible solution for optimality so basically in the previous video we took the initial feasible solution which is shown on your screen here and we tried to find out if we can proceed with finding out if this solution is optimal or not so based on this example we determined that yes this solution is acceptable to proceed for optimality test so now we'll do the optimality test on this initial feasible solution now an optimal solution is achieved when there is no other alternate solution which will give a lower transportation cost so the objective of the transportation model is to obtain the lowest transportation cost for the overall organization and the solution which will give the lowest transportation cost will be known as the optimal solution now in order to test whether the solution is optimal or not each vacant cell is examined to find out whether or not by making allocation to that cell the total transportation cost will reduce so for example cells like AR AS do not have any allocation currently so in the optimality test we'll see if we allocate something to these cells will the overall cost reduce further or not now there are two methods to test the initial feasible solution for optimality the first method is known as the stepping stone method the stepping stone method and the second method is known as the modified distribution method the modified distribution method now this method is also known as the MODI method this MO is coming from the MO of modified and DI is coming from the DI of distribution now in this video let us look at the stepping stone method to test for optimality so we look at the stepping stone method in this video now in the stepping stone method the first step is to proceed row by row and select a water square so proceed row by row and select a water square now what is a water square so a square without any allocation is known as a water square so let's say this square AS will be considered a water square while a square with an allocation is considered as a stone square so this square is considered as a stone square so as I mentioned in the beginning in order to test for optimality we have to evaluate each vacant cell to find out whether or not making an allocation in it reduces the total transportation cost so that is why we will first select a water square so we have to proceed row by row and select a water square so let's first select the square AR now let's move to step number two now in this step 
we have to form a closed path starting from the selected water square passing via stone squares and then back to the same water square so form a closed path starting from the selected water square via stone squares and then back to the same water square now there are definitely some more conditions for step number two so we have to use rectilinear motion only which means that we have to move in horizontal and vertical lines only then next is a right angle turn is made only at the stone squares even though the path may skip the stone or water squares so in step number two we have to form a closed path starting from the selected water square where the stone squares and then back to the same water square we have to move in horizontal and vertical lines only and even though you can pass through the stone or water squares a right angle turn is made only at the stone squares now it has been established that there will be one and only one such closed path for each water square in a particular shipping assignment so in this example let's try to create this closed path for the cell ar so this is the cell ar so from this cell we can create a line to the cell ap because this is a stone square and then we can create a right angle turn here so we can skip bp and go to the cell cp now again this is a stone square so we can create a right angle turn here and go to the cell cr and then again this is a stone square so we can create a right angle turn and go back to the square ar so after completing step number two let's now look at step number three So in this step we have to assign alternate plus and minus signs on the closed path starting with a plus sign on the water square. So assign alternate plus and minus signs on the closed path starting with a plus sign on the water square so here we started from the water square ar so we'll assign a plus sign here and then the alternate we have to assign a negative sign so this will be negative then this will be positive and again this will be negative now after we have completed step three let's look at step number four now step number four says that calculate the net cost change 
for the pot. Now the net cost change is obtained by summing up the unit cost of each cell with respect to the sign that we have assigned in the previous step. So the net cost change is obtained by summing up the unit cost of each cell. Now let's understand what are we trying to do here. So basically what we are trying to do is to examine if by allocating to the vacant cell that is AR, the overall cost can be reduced or not. So by forming a closed path, we have taken care of the row and column constraints, that is the demand and supply constraint. So if you note, there are always two edges for each row and each column. And by assigning a plus sign to the vacant cell, we are saying that we will allocate to this vacant cell and then the alternate negative and positive signs will take care of the row and column constraints by adding or subtracting the same allocation that we are doing to this vacant cell. So here if we are adding allocations to the cell AR we need to reduce the allocation from an already allocated cell in row A in order to maintain the supply constraint at row A. Hence, we have a negative sign for cell AP. Now, if we are reducing the allocation at AP, then in order to maintain the demand constraint at the distribution center P, we will have to increase the allocation for cell CP. And now if we increase the allocation for cell CP, we have to reduce the same allocation from the cell CR in order to maintain the supply constraint at plant C. And the decrease in allocation for cell CR will take care of the increase of allocation in cell AR with regards to the demand constraint at distribution center R. So now as per step 4, we have to find out the net cost change for this closed path. So we'll consider the unit cost at each of these cells along with the sign that we had assigned to these cells. So the net cost change will be 11 because this is 11 with a positive sign minus 2 plus 5 minus 15. So 11 minus 2 is 9, 9 plus 5 is 14, 14 minus 15 is minus 1. So this is minus 1. So for cell AR, we had AR minus AP plus CP minus CR which was equal to 11 minus 2 plus 5 minus 15 which is equal to minus 1. Now let's move to step number 5. So as per step number 5 Repeat steps 1 to 4 for each of the water squares. So repeat steps 1 to 4 for each of 
the water squares. So let us consider the next water square and repeat steps one through four. So step one was to proceed row by row. So the next one in row A is AS. So let's consider this water square. Now step number two is to form a closed path. So from AS we can move to AP then to CP then to CS and then back to AS. Now step number three is to assign plus and minus signs starting with a plus sign for the water square. So this is plus, this is minus, this is plus and this is minus. And then the next step is to calculate the net cost change for this path. So the net cost change will be 7 minus 2 plus 5 minus 9. So for the water square AS we have net cost change as AS minus CS plus CP minus AP which is equal to 7 minus 9 plus 5 minus 2 which is equal to plus 1. Similarly if you repeat these steps for all the other water squares you will find the following net cost change. So for cell BP it will be BP minus BS plus CS minus CP which is equal to 1 minus 1 plus 9 minus 5 which is equal to plus 4. For cell BQ BQ minus BS plus CS minus CP plus AP minus AQ which is equal to 0 minus 1 plus 9 minus 5 plus 2 minus 3 and this is equal to plus 2. For the cell BR, BR minus BS plus CS minus CR which is equal to 6 minus 1 plus 9 minus 15 which is equal to minus 1. And for cell CQ, CQ minus CP plus AP minus AQ which is equal to 8 minus 5 plus 2 minus 3 which is equal to 2. So here we have found out the net cost change for all the water squares. So for AR it is minus 1, for AS it is plus 1, for BP it is plus 4, for BQ it is plus 2, for BR it is minus 1 and for CQ it is plus 2. This is plus 2. So once we have completed step number 5, let's move to step number 6. Now in step number 6 we have to evaluate the solution for optimality by observing the sign of the net cost change. So evaluate the solution for optimality test by observing the sign of the net cost change. So the first is that a negative sign indicates that a cost reduction can be made by making the change. Indicates that a cost reduction can be made by making the change. Now let's look at the second condition. So as per the second condition 
a positive sign indicates an increase in cost if the change is made so the positive sign indicates an increase in cost if the change is made and of course the change is made means if we allocate to that water square the cost will increase the third condition is that if all the signs are positive then that means that the optimum solution has been reached so if all the signs are positive then that means that if you allocate to any of the water squares then the cost is going to increase which means that the solution that we are evaluating itself is the optimal solution so if all these signs are positive then that means that the optimum solution has been reached now let's look at the fourth condition so the fourth condition says that if more than one water square has a negative sign of the net cost change then the water square with the largest negative net cost change is selected for quicker solution so basically we already established that if there is a negative net cost change then that means that the optimum solution has not been reached so in that case we'll have to allocate to one of the water squares which has the negative net cost change and if there are multiple such squares then we choose the one with the largest negative net cost change so if more than one square has a negative sign then the water square with the largest negative net cost change is selected for quicker solution so in this case we have two cells with negative values which is ar and br so even the fourth condition is not valid in this case because both are the same values for the negative net cost change so in case like this the cell where the maximum allocation can be made needs to be selected so we look at that process in detail in the next video where we try to iterate towards optimality.